I'm Rida Fakhri. Health care is one of the most hotly contested issues in this year's U.S. presidential campaign. Most people in the country agree that the health care system is broken, but there's little agreement on how to fix it. 47 million Americans don't have health insurance, and if you don't have insurance or plenty of money, you can't get reliable care. Only the poorest of the poor, those classified as living below the poverty line, are covered by government insurance. Everyone else falls through the cracks. The ill often wait until they're so sick that they're brought to emergency rooms which must provide treatment. Different states have tried to pick up the slack, creating a patchwork of solutions. We the people traveled to the Denver Health Facility in Colorado. It has been established as the city's primary safety net for medical care. The goal is to provide even those without insurance with stable health care. But is this the best model for the rest of the nation? My tonsils are really red, and um, there's actually a red dot above them. So um, I check my tonsils at least once a week because they're swollen, and um, they've been swollen for like six months from January to July, and there's still no resolution. I'm 23 years old, and about a year and a half ago, I graduated from Texas A&M University with um, a BA in biology and a minor in anthropology. I work as a caregiver for infants at a school that encourages early childhood development, basically. And um, I don't qualify for welfare or Medicaid or Medicare or any of those. Um, so I'm kind of in the middle of it as um, a single woman in my 20s. Um, I have a degree, but I'm not working at a job that supplies health insurance. <clears throat> Sounds like it is really hurting me, actually. <laughs> I have a wide variety of friends. I have some that don't have insurance, and that's, that's not going to suffice for our society. It needs to change. Hi, sir. It's Jeremy Long in Urgent Care. I was fine with it for five days. Last two weeks have been really crazy. I had all the symptoms. I twisted my ankle. I moved to Denver in 2002 to do my residency training in internal medicine with the thought that I would be a primary care doctor in a public setting. Exceptionally busy, the busiest day we've had in years. For 15 years, this is what I'd hoped to do. When I was in college, I realized that, that this was a niche that I wanted to fill, and I think it's a very challenging one. It's just a big hassle trying to get in and um, trying to get cared for. This is her second visit. She was seen for strep throat and interestingly her rapid test that we do and rely on here was negative. I usually am on my parents insurance but it's just now that I'm 23 it's not covering me and so um, I have to figure out what I'm going to do on my own and I don't have a job that is giving me the benefits that I need and the healthcare system isn't really helping and I don't know unless you're completely poor where you're getting medical aid or you have a job that's taking care of you, you're just kind of out of luck. Denver Health is what is called the safety net institution, and it's here for people who can't pay for their health care, who are uninsured. Last year alone, 40% of all our charges were to people who couldn't pay us. We have safety net programs, we have safety net hospitals. The problem is the distance between um, what people would consider first line coverage and the safety net. Yes. Hi. Hi. Dr. Long, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. So in order to qualify for a public program like Medicaid or Medicare, you either have to be disabled for a long period of time or actually be very poor. If you look historically at the cost of health insurance, around World War II, it, it was a benefit. So an employer could, could provide it. It was a way of competing with other employers. Healthcare is something that is an issue to me um, as far as wanting that and desiring that. Um, but I also know it's a very complicated process, and you can't just say you're going to do health care without really coming up with a plan and a design. We have a plan. We are ready to implement it to make health care affordable and available to all Americans. There are many aspects of this proposal. One of them is to provide every American family with a $5,000 refundable tax credit 
that they can take and acquire insurance any place they want to in America. I'm a new patient with Denver Health and I haven't been able to get in with a primary care because there's only a limited amount of spots. If I had health insurance, I would just simply call up the provider that would take my health insurance and probably be in within a week. You know, I've been dealing with this for the last three to four months and really I think I've been telling myself I'm just tired because it's, you know, been a hard winter or, you know, it's just allergies. Um, but if I had health insurance, I would have just gone to the doctor already. In our urgent care clinic where we might see 100 or, like last Wednesday, 118 patients during a day, you know, perhaps 40 or more of those patients are uninsured. And on certain days, that's even higher. Ms. Salazar. Hello. I'm Dr. Long. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Pretty good. Well, we need to talk about your ankle, apparently. For the past couple of days, I've been trying to get seen, and it's been a big deal, but um, I'm here now, so I need to know. Yeah. It's broken, sprained, I mean, I don't know. Exactly. We're going to figure it out. We're going to do our best. There are a lot of patients in Denver County and the surrounding area who know that they can come to Denver Health for care, that they will be treated for urgent illnesses. There's a decent chance that this is just a sprain, like you were saying, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think it would probably be the best thing to do to, to just check some x-rays. The number one problem we have is the high cost of medical care. I need to know you know, is it really worth an extra $200 or more on the bill that they're going to receive to get blood work or an x-ray? And it's, and it's a challenge. And the cost and also the social stigma of having to come in and say, I can't pay for this, I don't have insurance, but I need care. That's a barrier for people. It's kind of one of those things where you decide, is it worth the energy at the moment or should I try to tough it out? I've been blessed in that nothing too major has happened to me, but it's still draining physically and um, just hard. We see people all the time who have delayed care for months, weeks, perhaps even years um, for, for certain complaints because they just were, were too afraid to come in. Maybe they don't have the financial resources, maybe they're undocumented. There are a lot of barriers that exist. And so we see a lot of those people who are, for the most part, healthy, but have some sort of event, medical event, where they need to seek health care. And then they're caught into this catch-22 where they don't have the coverage to pay for this high-cost health care, but they, they need to get it somewhere. Going to the doctor is not the first option for me, ever. I, it doesn't feel like it's back. It's just my tonsils. And just not feeling like I'm a priority. And when you're sick, you're in need, and you want somebody to take care of you. And the last thing you should feel is that nobody wants to take care of you or that you're kind of tossed to the side. Um, it started Friday, but I kind of just was like, oh, maybe it's just allergies. And then by Sunday, I was like, okay, I'm fed up with this, and it was getting really painful, And so, um, but it's still here. <laughs> yep. yep. People treat you differently when you have health insurance. There is no destiny that we cannot fulfill. Our new American majority can end the outrage of unaffordable, unavailable health care in our time. We can bring we can bring doctors and patients, workers and businesses, Democrats and Republicans together, and we can tell the drug and insurance industry that while they get a seat at the table, they don't get to buy every chair, not this time. Not now. Can I say ah? Uh, as medical care has gotten more expensive, as insurance has gotten more expensive, um, what's happened is every employer now has to look at that and say, can I afford to continue to do this? And the answer for many of them is no. So the number of employers offering health insurance to their employee drops every single year and has for the last 25 years. I've had patients decline things due to cost against my objections because I, I try and provide the same care to every patient, but they have the autonomy to say, I don't want this done or I don't want that done. I just try and let them know what I think is medically relevant and medically important for them. And I do have to factor in all these issues, and it does 
impact the care because it slows me down. I have to think about the context of where they're coming from, what they're able to afford, what, they're, what they will be billed for. Okay, you can sit however you're comfortable. All right, I'm going to torch you. Just a sec. Say, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, okay. I believe that if I had health insurance, um, this would not be an issue, and I would already know what's wrong with my tonsils. In, in, in times like this, like sort of a, an allergy flare is mm -hmm. kind of what I call it. The Prolonging having to see the doctor and know what's going on isn't a good deal because a lot of time with anything it just gets worse. It doesn't just stay in its little box, you know, um, the problem gets worse. I vote on candidates based on what I see. Um, right now I'm not really sure about who I would vote for um, just because I'm not necessarily too impressed in one or the other and so um, no matter who wins they're gonna have to deal with the issue and um, I, I don't think you can stop that. There's a groundswell on the part of people like me and my colleagues to try and have real change and to really make an impact on what we're doing and, and to try and have an overhaul of this fragmented and mostly broken system. Am I concerned about my throat? Yes, I'm very concerned about my throat. There's a lot of fear. In this country, we think of healthcare as a right, but it really isn't. It's a privilege at this point. And we've let ourselves put together an amalgam of market-based approaches to healthcare, employer-based approaches, entitlements. And there are a lot of people who just don't fall into one of those categories. On February 29th is when I had my surgery. And I knew that that would be the last time I would ever talk again. If I had gotten it diagnosed a year and a half earlier, I would still have been able to have a normal life. This is Comrade City. We're right off of 59th and Magnolia, and I've grown up here all my life. Denver Health has open doors, but only if you live in Denver County. If you live five feet outside of Denver County, um, there's no option like Denver Health. You, you're on your own. I year ago, April, I've been having a lot of trouble swallowing. I thought I had something in my throat. Every time I go to a doctor, they could not do anything for me. Because of the fact I didn't have insurance anymore. I was working 40 hours a week, and I was working hard. I've always worked well in the meantime. I'm just getting sicker and sicker and sicker. It was about 14 months before when I first started feeling that I was sick. But after I finally, it was 14 months later when I finally got help. And finally I had to end up taking my address and moving to Denver so that I could get help from Denver help. She tried virtually everyone in the metropolitan area. So I'm seeing her at a very advanced stage in her cancer. However, I immediately contacted our, one of our ear, nose, throat doctors and he saw her that afternoon, scoped her. By the next week, she was having her surgery. But this is someone who fell through so many cracks, it, it just makes you angry. Uh, and, and, and that's the type of situation I see, is people just can't get what they need. And if you delay care for something like that, or diabetes, or you know, hardening of the arteries, as you know, patients think of it, you, know, you could die without getting the care that you need, or you might receive it at such a late stage that it makes a huge difference. So right now, the cost of private insurance in the United States for a family of four is somewhere around $12,500. The average family in the United States lives on about $48,000 a year. So what you're asking a typical family without health insurance, without health from employers, to spend 25% of their gross income uh, on health insurance in order to cover the family. And simply, I mean, that's, that's unaffordable.
essentially every other country uh, that is our peer offers coverage to everybody and they offer it on a per capita basis about half the price of what we offer in the United States. Probably the biggest factor is is just the efficiency of the system. So um, the estimates are that we spend about 31 percent of the total health care dollar in the United States on administrative costs. So we've created this sort of it's been described as a bureaucratic arms race. The, the providers have to hire staff to get things done, and the insurance companies on the other side hire staff to try to reduce what's done. And so we spend a tremendous amount of money um, doing that. Cancer is often, you know, advanced at the time that we diagnose it. But there are a lot of patients. They were handled on an outpatient basis, and they did very, very well because they had limited cancers, which were diagnosed sooner. And she could have been one of those patients. But instead, she's someone who was in danger of needing a feeding tube, needing, you know, a, a major part of her throat resected. So there's just a lot more that goes into your care versus someone who's diagnosed at a very early stage. They become a little bit hoarse one day, we find a small polyp on their vocal cord, remove it, and it turns out that it's an early cancer and that's all they ever need done. And she could have been one of those people. I don't understand it. I had 14 months of nothing but L, thinking I wasn't going to be here anymore, thinking I was going to have to die. There's no doctor in Adams County that could help me that I, I have to move and work while I'm right across the street from Denver, but I don't have a Denver address, so I had to move. We haven't had the political leadership and we haven't been able to develop some sort of consensus as to how to move forward. It is completely crazy and I don't think anybody who was designing a healthcare system and start to say what is it we want to accomplish with a healthcare system would design the system we have and so to some degree it's a series of sort of historical accidents um, it, um, that we have the system we do um, and there has been a, you know there have been several times in our history where we've almost developed a system like Canada or like Germany's um, and decided to cover everybody and because of the mix of sort of politics and and, um, uh, and sort of social beliefs in the United States we haven't quite done it. We'll see you later. All right. It's inevitable that we change because our current system is completely unsustainable. We have a situation where a million to a million and a half Americans every year are forced off of insurance rolls. The number of people who have inadequate insurance goes up by one to two million a year and that may even be accelerating. So we have this bizarre formula where we pour, have the most expensive healthcare system in the world, we spend more on it every year um, to buy less and less. And that's, you look at those trends, it's unsustainable. That is why I've put forward a plan that says everybody will be able to get health care that is at least as good as the health care I have as a member of Congress. You know, someone like me working in urgent care trying to do what I do as a part of this system has a lot of chips stacked against me because there are so many incentives to not provide the care that we're so desperately trying to do. I just need a signature from you. Absolutely. One of the fundamental problems is that the market-based component of our health care system drives a lot of what we're able to do in terms of health care reform. Until we can tackle that problem and say this is social injustice to not 
provide coverage to 47 million or more people or to provide the adequate amount of coverage to well more than that, a much higher number who are underinsured, then we're going to continue to have a lot of people going without the care that they need. There are many hidden costs associated with employer of provided uh, health insurance because they don't reflect all the costs to the employer and those are reflected in added cost and less wages for the employee. The polls say that Americans, a large percentage, are ready for major overhaul of the health care system. I have to believe we're very close to the tipping point. Um, we're at the point now where, um, you know, the professional class of the United States, the middle class, is, they're threatened. And I think that's the key ingredient right now, is that perhaps so, the average American is going to see their self-interest in major reform. Whatever The U.S. spends more on health care than any other nation, nearly 20% of its GDP compared with roughly 10% for most of the industrialized world. That's all for now. We hope you'll join us next time for another edition of We the People.